In this case, I want to show you another method for solving balancing equations. This is a method that I don't think many of you will actually uh, end up using, but I will, did want it to be out there as a possibility for those of you who'd like another method that works uh, a little bit more logically than going through a guess and check process like we normally do with balanced equations. This is a case of a mathematical version of solving balanced equations. So let's take an example here and we'll walk through how this works. H2 plus O2 forms H2O. Now this is a really simple equation uh, but to balance, but we'll, let's walk through it so we can see how it would be done. To set this up, a, the first thing you do is place a letter A, B, and C in front of each of the molecules. If there are more molecules, you could use D, E, whatever. Then create an equation for each atom. Hydrogen here, there are two hydrogens in A, so 2A, plus zero hydrogens in B, the O2, so 0B equals two hydrogens in H2O, so 2C. For oxygen, the 0A plus 2B equals 1C. So really, we end up with two equations because we have two elements. We can simplify those two equations. The first equation, 2A equals 2C, can simplify to A equals C. The second equation, 2B equals C, can simplify down into B equals half C, if you want to go to the fraction. So we have 2A equals 2C, or A equals C, and we have 2B equals C. Now we're going to choose an integer value for one of the uh, letters and then use that to solve all the other ones. We're going to try to find the one that's going to be smallest, make that 1 or 2, and then work our way up from there. In this case, we have B equals half C. So to make a whole number for the uh, coefficient of C, let's make C2. If we make C2, that makes B equal to 1, and it also makes A equal to 2. So we get 2H2 plus 1O2 forms 2H2O. So let's go through this with some examples um, while we'll walk through them step by step. This first one, C2H6O plus O2 forms CO2 plus H2O. So this will be our A, this will be our B, C, and D. We're going to start with carbon. There's 2 in A, 0 in B equals 1 in C plus 0 in D. For hydrogen, 6 in A, 0 in B, 0 in C, 2 in D. For oxygen, you get a more complex equation. 1 in A, 2 in B, 2 in C, and 1 in D. Now we want to simplify these equations down. Last equation doesn't really simplify very far, but the first two do. This one, 2A equals C, and in this case, 3A equals D. So we can start to substitute in this last equation. So 1a plus 2b equals, for c we can put in 2a, and for d we can put in 3a. So we get, simplify this down, 1a plus 2b equals 4a plus 3a, so 1a plus 2b equals 7a, or 2b equals 6a, or b equals 3a. So we have b equals 3a, c equals 2a, d equals 1a. We're going to set a equal to 1, therefore we're going to get 1c2h6o, we have B equal to 3A, so 3O2. C equal to 2A, so 2CO2. And D equal to 3A, 3H2O. And we can check six hydrogens on each side, two carbons on each side, and we have four 
plus 3. Oxygen's on the right side, so 7. 6 from the O2 plus 1 from the C2H6O. Let's look at one more example. Zinc will be A, HCl will be B, ZnCl2 will be C, H2 will be D. So for zinc, we're going to get A equals C. For hydrogen, we're going to get B equals 2D. For chlorine, we're going to get B equals 2C. In this case, our simplest will probably be A, so I'm going to make A equal to 1. If A is equal to 1, C is equal to 1. B is therefore equal to 2. And if B is equal to 2, D must be equal to 1. So we get Zn plus 2HCl forms ZnCl2 plus H2. And that's a mathematical way of solving balanced equations. You do not have to use this. You can always use the guess and check method. But for those of you who would like another method, this is another way you can go about the process.